One of the worst affected cities in Ukraine in the last 33 days of this war is the port city of Mariupol. Most of the residents of Mariupol have now left because of the kind of violence that has played out in the city. The port city has been laid to waste, essentially, by Russian heavy weapons, with neighborhoods left completely unrecognizable under relentless artillery fire. Ukraine has accused Russia of forcibly relocating thousands of civilians from Mariupol. Ukraine's Deputy Prime Minister, Irina Vereshchuk, said 40,000 had been moved from Ukraine's Mariupol to Russian-held territory without any coordination with Kyiv. Ukraine President Zelensky had accused Ukraine, Russian forces of deliberately targeting civilians in the city, including bombing an art school where hundreds of women, children and elderly people have been taking shelter. And let's also get you a report now from Lviv. It's the city where most of the Ukrainians fled to, considered to be a safe haven. But no longer, because you've now got Russian forces again bombarding Lviv with airstrikes and missiles. So the reason this made headlines of the weekend particularly is because U.S. President Joe Biden was in Poland at the time, about 400 kilometers away from the city of Lviv. Russia's offensive in Ukraine has moved to an even deadlier pace. The assault is moving from the east, close to Russian border, to the far west city, Lviv, bordering NATO member Poland. The largest city in western Ukraine was once bustling, providing safe haven for hundreds of thousands of people fleeing the war, raging in the troubled eastern parts but is no longer the safe zone, immune from Russian airstrikes. In the last 24 hours, the city witnessed one of the fiercest attacks that Western Ukraine has experienced by far. Two rockets struck a fuel depot on the city's eastern outskirts, and two rockets later hit a military factory. Followed by high-precision cruise missiles striking an infrastructure facility. Russia showing clear indications that it has expanded the war theatre. The chilling images on your screen capture the panic that gripped the city as missiles rained in. Citizens ran for their lives as they watched the deadly smoke engulfing the region. Civilians huddled inside bunker to escape the wrath of Putin's ferocious assault. We were sitting in uh, our car for a couple of minutes and then uh, we heard this like, uh, very loud... Uh, uh, I don't know how to say it. When rocket... Uh, just came after a couple of seconds maybe 30 seconds second uh, bombing and everyone left to the shelters the attacks had caused significant damage to infrastructure facilities blowing out windows at a local school leading to widespread destruction the attack on the western city came exactly at a time U.S. President Joe Biden was just across in Poland. The U.S. President was exactly at a distance of only 400 kilometers from the site where Putin's missile hit. For God's sake, this man cannot remain power. Let us resolve to put the strength of democracies into action to thwart the, denies of our, the designs of autocracy. Let us remember that the test of this moment is the test of all time. Rescue teams are having their hands full, spending all night extinguishing raging fire and minimizing fallout of the attacks, which raged a fuel shortage, leading the massive flames. In the fog of war, it is unclear on day 32 if ukraine is able to strike back and hard 
at the Russian strongholds. Ukraine has also insisted it's mounted a series of counterattacks in the Kherson region in the south. And that is where the Russians have completely cut off Ukraine from the Sea of Azov and the Black Sea. From Mariupol to Kherson, the Russians once again trying to consolidate their position even as Ukraine's forces try to strike back. With cameraman Lalit Mohan Joshi in Lviv, Ukraine, Gaurav Savant for India.